Have you ever wondered why some graphic cards completely refuse to start? No display, no beeps, just spinning fans? Well, today we are going to talk about something really interesting that might be the reason. The memory chips. And not just any memory, GDDR6 versus GDDR6X. Now, I know, that sounds like something out of the robot sci-fi movie. But I promise, by the end of this video, you will not only know the difference, you'll also understand why just one tiny fault in the GDDR6X can stop your GPU from working at all. To make this super easy to follow, we are going to compare the GPU memory system to something we all understand. A classroom full of students. Trust me, by the end of it all, it'll all make perfect sense. So let's head into the class and find out what's going on. Okay, think of a GPU like a super fast artist. It needs really big, fat, fast notebook to sketch out images, textures, shadows, everything that you see on your screen. That notebook is called video memory, and it comes in a form of chips called GDDR which stands for Graphics Double Data Rate. But GDDR isn't just a notebook with more pages. It's a notebook that can be opened and written on really very fast, several times a second. In simple terms, the GPU needs to constantly store and retrieve data, like textures, shadows, lighting effects, frame buffers, and all the pixels it's drawing. And it has to do that at an incredible speed to make sure your game doesn't lag or your render doesn't stutter. This is why GDDR is different from regular memory like DDR. While DDR RAM is built for multitasking and system operations, GDDR is built for maximum bandwidth. It doesn't need to be great at juggling 20 tasks. It just needs to move massive chunks of data as fast as possible. The double data rate part means it transfers data on both the rising and falling edge of each clock cycle, which basically doubles the speed of the memory chip without increasing the clock frequency. Physically, GDDR chips are those small black rectangular components you see around the GPU core. You'll usually see 8 to 12 of them placed systematically in a ring. They all wire directly into the GPU using a width bus, kind of like a multi-lane highway. The more lanes, the more data you can send at once. When a GPU advertises a 256-bit or a 384-bit memory interface, they are referring to how wide that highway is. Combine that with high-speed memory chips and you get a massive bandwidth sometimes over 900 gigabits on newer cards like RTX 3090 Ti. And here's something cool. Different generations of GDDR bring different speeds and capabilities. We've had GDDR3, GDDR5, GDDR5X, GDDR6, GDDR6X, and even GDDR7 is here, pushing speeds even higher. We'll talk about GDDR7 in a future video, but today's focus is on what makes GDDR6 and GDDR6X so different, and why one of them can completely stop your GPU from booting. Imagine two friends talking using flashlights. GDDR6 uses a flashlight that's either on or off. So it's very simple. A flash of light means 1, no light means 0. Easy. But GDDR6X tries to say more by using four different levels of brightness instead of just on or off. So instead of saying just one or zero, it says super dim, dim, bright, and super bright, which translates to zero, 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 one, one, zero, or one, one. That means it can send twice the amount of information in the same amount of time. Amazing, right? But here's the catch. If your eye blinks or the flashlight flickers, the message gets scrambled. That's why GDDR6X is faster but also way easier to confuse if there's a small problem. GDDR6 works using something called NRZ signaling, non-return to zero. It's a fancy term, but all it really means it uses two voltage levels to represent data high for 1, low for 0. It transfers 2 bits per clock cycle. 
one on the rising edge and one on the falling edge, which is why it's called double data rate. Each memory pin sends a steady stream of clean, simple signals. This makes it relatively tolerant to noise and easier to work with on a PCB. And because it's more forgiving, a small issue with one chip, like a weak solder joint, slightly delayed timing, may not stop it from booting. That's one reason GDDR6 is more preferred for reliability. GDDR6X takes it up a notch with PAM4 signaling, pulse amplitude modulation with four levels. Instead of just high and low voltage, it uses four different voltage steps to represent two bits in a single symbol. So rather than sending one bit per symbol, it sends two bits per symbol, which increases the data rate without increasing the number of wires. But here's the downside. Those four voltage levels are much closer together. So it's way more sensitive to noise, timing mismatch, and even trace length differences on the PCB. That's why you see GDDR6X memory modules are very close to the GPU core compared to GDDR6. It needs perfect tuning during boot up, what we call memory training. If even one chip isn't aligned properly with the controller, the entire system refuses to boot. That's why even a single bad GDDR6X chip means no display, no BIOS, just fan spinning. Because of this fancy four level flashlight trick, GDDR6X can go much faster. GDDR6 usually tops out around 16 or 18 gigabits per second. That's like sending a whole HD movie in just a couple of seconds. But GDDR6X can do 19, 21 or even 24 gigabits per second. It's like upgrading from a sports bike to a jet engine. But jets need perfect weather to fly. And GDDR6X needs perfect signals to work properly. Now, imagine running that jet engine inside a box with no fans. What happens? It gets hot. Really hot. That's the same with GDDR6X. It pulls more power and runs at higher speeds, so it gets warmer. That's why high-end graphic cards like the RTX 3080 and the 3090 have big chunky heat sinks, thermal pads, and even temperature sensors just for those chips. Let's say two kids are reading a book in a class. One is very calm and will keep going on even if he misses a word. That's GDDR6. The other kid is super strict. If he gets one word wrong, they shut the book and walk out. That's GDDR6X. GDDR6 will let you boot even if one memory chip has a problem. You will see a display and you will be able to do basic testing. But GDDR6X, one tiny mistake and the whole GPU says no. And it's just a black screen. When you power on your GPU, it's like waking up a class of students. The teacher, which is the memory controller, calls roles. Chip 1, are you there? Chip 2, Chip 3, and each chip needs to reply on time at the right volume. This is called memory training. The controller is checking that every chip is responding properly, that the wires are connected and that the timing is perfect. Now, imagine one chip has a cold solder joint. Maybe it's not talking loud enough or it's talking too late. That's like a student mumbling or answering late. The teacher can't understand, so the whole class can't start. That's exactly what happens with GDDR6X. Even one faulty chip, one broken address line or a tiny mismatch in voltage, the GPU says, sorry, class dismissed. No boot. No BIOS, just fan spinning. But with GDDR6, the teacher is more relaxed, even if one chip doesn't answer perfectly. Sometimes the controller says, it's okay, we'll go ahead anyway. So the card will still boot. And you will get artifacts and you can still use tools like mats or mods to help you diagnose it. That's why as a repair tech, it's easy to run mats on a faulty GDDR6 memory, but never on a GDDR6X. It's all or nothing. Let me tell you about an RTX 3080 I worked on. The fan spun, 
The power drawer looked normal, but there was no display. The resistance check on the memory looked fine too. I had to boot the GPU using the internal display of the test bench and ran mods to find out which memory module had an error. I then replaced the faulty one and fixed the issue. That's how sensitive GDDR6X is. Even when everything seems normal, voltages are present, resistance is okay and the card appears alive, just one faulty chip can shut down the entire system. You might be wondering, if GDDR6X is so fast, how come we now have GDDR6 memories running at 20 or even 24 gigabits per second? Great question. Samsung and SK Hynix both have developed high performance variants of GDDR6 that breaks past all 16 gigabits ceiling. So yes, there are 20 gigabits per second and 24 GDDR6 chips out there. But here's the thing, they're still using simpler NRZ signaling. That means GDDR6 gets their high speed by pushing the clocks higher and not by PAM4 like GDDR6X. And that's the good thing. For example, SK Hynix chips, and I'll display the model number of the chips on the screen, is a 20 gigabits per second GDDR6 module designed for high bandwidth applications with better signal integrity and thermal tolerance. And Samsung's lineup includes the chip, again, SC20 and SC24, but SC24 goes up to 24 gigabits per second while maintaining NRC signaling. These chips are used in next-gen GPUs, like AMD's RX 7000 and RX 9000 series, as well as AI accelerators and other high-throughput applications that demand performance without the added sensitivity of PAM4. So even though GDDR6X was the first to break the 20 gigabits per second barrier, GDDR6 has caught up and in some cases might be more repair-friendly. So now you know, GDDR6 and GDDR6X might look similar from the outside, but on the inside they speak totally different languages. GDDR6 is simple and robust. It'll try to work even when things go wrong, but GDDR6X is like a perfectionist. It wants perfect timings, perfect signals, perfect connections, miss anything and the GPU won't even start. And while you can't swap GDDR6 for GDDR6X or vice versa, since they use different signaling and pin layouts, it's clear that high-speed GDDR6 offers impressive performance without the sensitivity headache that comes with GDDR6X. If you're a repair technician, now you know where to start looking, especially when the GPU refuses to boot. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like comment and subscribe for more GPU repair insights from GPU Solutions. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Cheers.